Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Spilling the Beans. Today I'm sitting down with my good buddy Matt Skinner who owns High Rise Beverage Company here in, out of Charleston, South Carolina. And they are scaling like crazy. They are a health-based CBD, hemp derivative, and Delta 9 um, beverage company. And it's kind of a, they've taken an angle of, this is the health focus side of CBD and hemp derived drinks. And so um, they've been exploding, blowing up like crazy, having tons of success locally here in Charleston. And they're actually scaling and into all these different states all around the country and nationwide. So I'm super excited to sit down with him. We're actually at his uh, location, his dry bar here in Charleston, South Carolina. We're gonna do this as a two part series. The first portion is me talking about the product and how he built the product and how he you know, derived the product and all those kinds of things from a product based business. And the second part, which will be out next week, will be more about the business side of things. His entrepreneurial journey, how he has raised capital, how he has uh, put distribution and manufacturing together, how he's created strategic partnerships, built a team on, in order to have a business that has unbelievable hockey stick growth. So I'm excited to go sit down with Matt, excited to share his story with you guys. Good Matt Skinner. You. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, bro. Dude, all right. So we are here at the your dry bar yeah here in charleston and uh and first of all it's an awesome location the decor is amazing um i think it's very thoughtfully planned out that you're next to some very big bars right in the area and i want to dive into the real estate component right a lot of the viewers of of this podcast are real estate folks um i also want to dive into the business component of of this and what that journey's looked like, right? You've owned some restaurants and stuff in the, in the past, right? And and on some other businesses, but this one has really kind of had this upward trajectory of insane growth, bringing on investors and a lot of other stuff. So I'd love to be able to dive into the the business component of things too, and then obviously we're going to spend a lot of time on the product and what's going on with the industry, what's going on with the product, what's going like why. Do you think it's had as much growth as it has? And I'd like to start in kind of a reverse order, right? I want to talk about the product first, okay? And um, uh, and dive into high rise. So um, I'm going to have your lovely wife on here as well and talk about the Charleston Hemp Collective and a little bit about how that got started. And maybe you can give a light background, don't steal her thunder. Right? I won't, I won't do it. She's, she, she owns the thunder, we know that. Yeah, 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 for sure. But maybe you can give some background on what is High Rise as, as far as a beverage company? So, you know, in High Rise, it's an afterthought to Charleston Hemp Collective, as weird as that is. It's, it's definitely become our baby um, now. It's really created some national recognition. And due to that fact, it's really worked in favor of Charleston Hemp Collective. We, so so um, no, nobody's ever heard of Charleston Hemp Collective. Nobody's ever heard of High Rise. How would you describe what these products are? All of them are cannabinoid based. Marijuana? No. Cannabis? Cannabis, hemp. Okay. So when we use hemp the word based. cannabis, it's great that you said that because that's something people, a lot of times they hear the word cannabis, they think immediately marijuana. Mm -hmm. Cannabis by definition is the plant itself. And there's a hemp version of it and there's a marijuana version of it. So. We work strictly in that legal world um, of all 50 states with the Farm Bill. Um, all, all, all of our products are hemp derived, but we do have a THC element to the hemp plant. And as long as it's 0.3% or less by dry weight, we can put a THC into these products. When they put the Farm Bill out there, they had no idea by dry weight we'd be making something with the weight of a, of a beverage. Right. So you put a microdose in these and create an effects-based drink, which is what these are. Um, and it's an alternative to alcohol. So we, we developed high rise, um, ingredients outside of cannabinoids were the most important part of these drinks for us. There's other people who have created drinks like this. Um, and they're really quite honestly, most drinks out there are just focused on the THC's version first mm -hmm. and then just what they can make to make it a liquid. Um, we want to create a wellness product and that's what this is. Um, we didn't want to get too high on the dosage. There are some other cans out there like this that have 20, 30 milligrams, even 50 milligrams. We want to keep something that would substitute a glass or two of wine. And, and, and that's, that's what I have noticed. So first of all, my dad is a cop 
for, I don't know, 25 years, right? And then he's in charge of D.A.R.E., right? He's, he's like number two or three for D.A.R.E. And, uh, and I was raised in a household of like, no drugs, no drugs, no drugs, right? A lot has changed in uh, that mentality, right? Like you see it on Netflix and you're seeing things like uh, uh, these documentaries on Fantastic Fungi, right? And um, you see the, what's the other one? Open Your Mind or something yeah. like that. And then there's, there, you start seeing those and how these, these alternatives like, like cannabis, like mushrooms, yeah. right? Have completely revolutionized health components, right? Of people's lives. And it's, and it's, it's always been anti, well, I mean, you, you probably know better than me, but it's been anti, the government has been opposed to it because they haven't figured out a way to like tax it, it seems like. Yeah. Right? They, haven't, they haven't found a way to make money on it. And then so because of it, they, they downplayed all these different things. And now it's, it's becoming more mainstream, right? And also truly regulated. It's, you know, and it is becoming more mainstream. We need better regulation first. Right. Because <clears throat> there's always bad actors in anything. And <clears throat> when we talk about mushrooms or we talk about cannabinoids, you can abuse anything, right? Yeah. I mean, they, we remember back, abuse in alcohol. Day, back in the days when we grew up in high school, which I'm a lot older than you, but, you know, there were times we, we think of mushrooms and we think of cow tipping and we think of going out in the field yeah. and just grabbing a bunch of them, hallucinating and going to another planet. Hey, microdosing is a term now that's really focused on wellness, whether you're suffering from depression, any level of mental health, um, PTSD. There's so many studies, and I think people need to get out there. And I know we're kind of getting away from cannabinoids, but same thing with cannabinoids. I mean, people use cannabis in microdosed forms. And, and our branding as a whole, we're always going to be, through Charleston M. Collective or through High Rise, a brand that focuses on the wellness of individuals. And that's going to be a microdosed form. We're never going to be, if you're looking for a shop or a place to go to, to find a version of cannabinoids, where you're going to go to outer space, it's not going to be through our brand. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, but there, you know, there's a little bit of all that. Out there. And I think that makes a big difference. And I think that's why you guys are doing so well with the branding because everybody else is like, let's go get hammered. Let's go to outer space, right? Like let's, let's go off the rails. It really is a wellness component to it. Last year we won best wellness product and we're fortunate enough this year in Charleston uh, to be nominated for best NA product. Uh, best not wellness alcoholic. product, not alcoholic. So not only did, you know, or we have vo voted in a best cannabis product, number one, we were voted for that, um, nominated. We were nominated for best wellness product again this year, and we were nominated for best non-alcoholic product. And, th mm -hmm. and that's just an honor to win best wellness product last year. We broke that stigma of cannabis. And again, you know, it's just normalizing. It's all about education. So we got to get out there and we're constantly on the forefront, me and my wife and our whole team. And we get out there, share my wife's story, which, you know, everybody that knows us knows she suffered, suffers from ulcerative colitis. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was what brought us into this industry because CBD changed her life. Mm -hmm. And it was great to get behind something she was passionate about. And then I ended up falling in love with the science and the business of it and the evolving aspect of it. But um, yeah. Well, well, I think the, I want to hit on the wellness because I think this is a, a really important piece and a, a mental piece for people to kind of overcome because it's been burned into so many of our brains mm -hmm. for so long of how how bad cannabis can be or how how it's an entry into other drugs or what, whatever sure. you know the the narrative has been and uh, and and I've never been like you know have I have, I've smoked pot I've been to Amsterdam before and I was never really like a a, a marijuana user or anything like I've tried it a couple times but I never really reacted um, or responded well to that. That being said, you know, being in this health industry in Charleston, <clears throat> and obviously our paths crossed, that's how we met. We both know Gunner, we both know Q, and um, they're big proponents of, of high rise. And so um, my wife picked up some of the CBD ones, and I can say, like I, wore, I wear an aura ring that's, that tests my sleep every single night, and it gives me a sleep rating, and how well I, how, what my deep sleep was, what my REM sleep was, and and I can say after I have a CBD, which does not have any THC component in it at all, after I have a CBD seltzer and I go to bed, I have deeper sleep, I have more REM sleep and higher quality sleep overall per the, the metrics, right, from my biotech 
uh, um, ring that I, wow. that I read, right? And so there's very real health data out there on what that does. And then from a, from a THC, like the Delta 9 is the one that has the THC in it, right? Correct. And so from a Delta 9, from personal experience, it's like having a glass of wine. It's like having one cocktail. That's the type of feel that I get. It's not a high feeling when I smoked weed or had a gummy before. It's, a, it's just a light little buzz. One or two glasses of that is, is good. And there's no hangover, right? Like that's the key. That's yeah, the, it's not. The, like when you take a look at what a Delta 9 does versus um, drinking, several, like what that does on my aura ring, if I have a few cocktails with alcohol, with liquor in it, I have horrible sleep, right? I have horrible uh, REM sleep, no deep sleep. And overall, my sleep rating is, is you know, uh, half at best of what it usually is. And with this, it's enhanced if I have a Delta 9 or if I have a uh, CBD. So it's like kind of become a thing where I have one before bed and, um, and so I don't wake up hungover. You it drink doesn't a, ruin my next day. Do you drink a CBD before bed or a Delta Usually 9? a CBD. Okay. I'll, I'll either do a CBD or I'll do the Charleston Hemp Collective um, a CBD gummy. Okay. On a weekend, I might have um, a cocktail and then I'll go to like two of these. And listen, everybody's body's different with cannabinoids. That's one thing I always like to tell people. What might be one drink for you, substituting one of these for mm -hmm. one drink, might be two drinks to someone else. Yeah. I, these drinks, and I always tell people, you know, sip on them first one, enjoy it. You should never get to a place where you feel like you get a little too high, but your right. body, the great thing about putting a fluid in you, it's also got a nano, they're nano infused, so it's gonna hit your body at the point of five minutes later, you're gonna start feeling it. Mm -hmm. um, it's important just to let your body kind of tell you. Some people drink one, you know, me, we know Gunner, he can drink six of them. I yeah. mean, you know, and he's fine, but uh, he has a crazy metabolism as well. <laughs> Boy, it's crazy. Must be nice. Uh, so, so no, I, I agree 100%. And, um, yeah, so like if I have one of these at, uh, you know, a CBD before bed, I sleep better. My wife has the exact same experience. She has like a, a Whoop watch thing um, that, that tests what that looks like. The, the Delta 9s, um, again, I think, I think one, two of them, whatever that looks like. But the, the key thing for me is like, you don't, you don't get hung over, right? And, and when you take a look at alcohol, you take a look at what the high rise beverages are like alcohol is poison. Alcohol is toxins, and it and it takes your body a lot of time and a lot of work in order to detoxify from the alcohol. Yep. And this, you can get a similar effect. Or drink one, a couple of them, and and still have you know just a little bit of a of a light heartedness, light headedness, and uh, a social aspect to it um, without the hangover, without the you know, loss of control. Now, obviously, again, everybody's body responds differently and all that kind of stuff. So you got to be aware. Um, but it's, it's kind of grown on me, right? It was, it was it, something that I never really got into. And then uh, over the past few months, it's like, all right, hey, just one. And, uh, and I feel pretty good about it. It's really, and you know, the cool thing is, is, and I'm starting to see this more, the brand is actually <clears throat> right now launching, <clears throat> excuse me, throughout the country. And Every time we go somewhere else, I think to myself, I'm like, okay, we're gonna go to another city mm -hmm. where somebody's had a drink from that city they've created like this, and it's done really well in the city. Charleston, it's what's happened in Charleston with normalizing this, I haven't seen anywhere else we've gone. Um, it's, you know, we, we're launching in Boston, we're launching in Florida, we're launching in Austin, Texas, Nashville we're in now, California, we're, we're finalizing a contract down in San Diego and LA right now. So we're getting all this great space where you would think these products would already have this normalized aspect to them, but the love that Charleston has given this brand and the way it's gotten on so many menus and restaurants here, we are very health focused in the city. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody's looking for that NA space too. NA is so big right now because they are trying to get away from alcohol, but they want an alternative. And High Rise just has gotten a tremendous amount of love in the city, mm -hmm. which has been really awesome. Well, I think, I think it's, Obviously, a testament to you guys because you guys are locals as well, right? And you're able to promote it, and they know who you are, and um, and all of a sudden, it it again, it hits that tipping point, right? Once a certain number of bars have it, people just kind of expect it at the bars, and now everybody needs it. Otherwise, you're almost irrelevant as a restaurant or a bar, right? And so, I've seen that happen. And I was talking to a bartender, somebody who makes drinks for a living, 
who doesn't drink alcohol and only drinks these. That's we are seeing that more and more. You go it was, to these, I mean, that's like, the younger crowd. It's, <clears throat> it's, it's almost like when I was in college, man, it was just drink your face off every right. single night. And like, I, I, I looked at my um, New Year's resolutions in 2007 when I'm a senior in college, and it was reduce binge drinking to four nights per week. That was one of my New Year's resolutions. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. No. Holy cow. But that was, <clears throat> that was the psychology was. when I was in college, right? And, and now, college kids, like, I'm sure a bunch of them still drink and stuff, but it seems like this younger demographic is leaning a, a lot more towards, towards these alternative NA type drinks. Right, but now they're coining the phrase sober curious. It's like we are at a space in this world where that is a coined phrase, sober curious. So like that's what everybody's doing right now. They're really interested in being sober, taking better care of themselves. So you know, not only high rise, but there's going to be so many more drinks mm -hmm. hit the world. Whether it's you know your mushroom, functional mushrooms. Um, hopefully, one day we'll get into the psychedelic side of that as well, mm -hmm. um, from a microdosing standpoint. Well, they have the mushroom like um, coffees now. Yeah, and they have. Um, yeah, I mean, you see a lot of that. There's a lot of mushroom-based vitamins that stimulate the brain, stimulate brain activity. I just, I was watching on that fantastic fungi thing, the- Oh, it's such um, a great document. It was like, it, it was like, they think that the way the human brain expanded, like it tripled in size in a matter of a million years, which is like unfathomable in the world of, of evolution, right? Like there's nothing has ever evolved that quickly. They think it's because humans were walking around picking mushrooms and eating it and essentially they call it the stoned ape theory, right? Where their brain just expanded and it expanded enough where they were able to develop language and language takes up about two thirds of our brain. It's, it's the idea of communication and, and stuff. And they think that without mushrooms, like humans would never have evolved the way that, the, that they did. So I don't know, it's kind of fascinating. I did not know that. That's pretty, I, I, I've watched parts of that, but I did not watch that. Yeah. That's, that's really fascinating. Yeah, so. Um, you know, but it is one thing you said a minute ago that I just want to touch on. It's, you were talking about how much this has changed. People's mentality <laughs> of these products has changed. I, I remember when me and Livis were going to start our first store downtown. And that was, I guess we're talking about six years ago now. And, my parents, you know, they're old school, and we went to a restaurant right around the corner. We were excited to share this new venture with them, and we sat at dinner. Uh, we were at Stella's, I'll never forget it, and I shared with my parents that we were gonna be opening a cannabis hemp store on King Street. And uh, 10 minutes into that conversation, I look over and my mom's crying. <laughs> and she's like, please don't do this to the family. Just, do you really wanna do that? Do you really wanna sell drugs? And the only thing she could say that whole time is do you really wanna be selling drugs? Are you sure this is what you wanna do? Because that's the only way she could see it. And no matter how much we shared where we were going with this, it, it had to be a proof of concept. And we, seeing my parents react like that, and of course, you know, I mean, your parents are everything to you. You never yep. wanna let them down. Um, you really wanna go in here and serve justice to what we were doing, which was Livis' story. And um, it took five years to get where we are now, but now it's like, she'll call me up and all of her friends are using the products. She's, you know, she's our number one fan. And it's just awesome to see that evolving side well, of people's thought process. Well, I mean, I'm sure that there's like this deep rooted, I don't want to let my mom down and I don't want to be the go and get high drug dealer, right? Like right. You, you never want that to be like your, your brand where almost all the other brands are that way, right? Like a lot of the other ones, you guys are so health focused which is why, <clears throat> again, I think why you've had such good success, because it's a, it's a, it's a tastefully way, it's a tasteful way to utilize CBD and THC and the, and the Delta Nine stuff, um, in a health conscious, you know, environment. And and I, 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 you know, listen, people like to have a few drinks. They like to loosen up. They like. I just feel like you guys have taken all those kinds of things and put it into like a perfect product and that's why you're having so much success. It's, it's been awesome. We've... How, yeah, so so what do other products look like after this? I, I mean, obviously you have all these different flavors, right? And all the flavors are awesome, by the way. Thank you. Um, and then you have the CBDs and you have the Delta 9s. Delta 9s have the THC, CBD is just like the relaxed component of it. There's no THC in there at all. Are there other products in line? Yeah, and, and, and actually kind of what sparked that thought process was the challenges of working through cannabinoids in the state of South Carolina. You know, we're very proud of our state. We're very proud of what we've accomplished in Charleston. 
<clears throat> and then, you know, we, we had the hammer come down on us um, with DHEC here in South Carolina about these products. And, you know, I just had a meeting with them yesterday and I'm very excited of where this is going, but it's been a challenge for them too. They, this came out of nowhere to them. It's prohibition in a new space that they've never seen. Mm. Um, and so they're just trying to figure out what's the safe way for them to feel like these products can be on the street. And I, and I understand now, after spending a lot of time with them yesterday and the process we've had to go through them with them over the last 90 days. But to get back to your question, when we felt like there might be a moment where all of this is gonna get pulled from the state, we're like, High Rise has really created a safe, comfortable place with a lifestyle brand, because we're lifestyle first, where people can share their story and they get aware of that brand some way, whether it's carrying the can, whether it's a t-shirt, whether it's a hat, and people know that that person stands for something because it is an alternative way of thinking. And I think that the brand itself brought comfort to people. We've created a community around it and uh, we decided to bring out what's called the Blackout Edition. And it'll hit here in two weeks um, in the marketplace. And the reason we called it the Blackout Edition. What, what is it first? It's an adaptogen um, version of the drinks. No cannabinoids, adaptogens only. Um, we have a lift version of it. Um, and then we also have a calm version of it. A, a lift version, like a caffeinated feeling. Exactly. Whether, whether, I don't think it's caffeinated. Almost, it's not caffeinated, but it's, right. it's, it's an alternative version. Um, it's just like having a Red Bull, but staying away from the, all the negative stuff that goes yep, on. It's yep, a health yep. and wellness focused product. Yeah. And, and, we, and that's, and that's mm -hmm. I think, again, going back to the health and wellness side of things, like, like the ingredients that are in here, it's n like, dude, if you have a, a Red Bull once a day, like, your body's gonna shut down eventually, right? Oh yeah. It's, it's so bad for you, a Red Bull. This is very clean ingredients and um, you don't have any of that kind of stuff, which is why it continuously gets nominated for best you know, health beverage, alternative to alcohol, not NA type, type beverages. And uh, it's like, you guys are so good at keeping the ingredients clean. And so the Blackout Edition has those, the same cleanliness to it. It does. It's just with adaptogens instead. Exactly. And then we don't we, we get away from some regulatory issues in the state. But we felt like, and now we're excited that we're just bringing it out because so, so many places um, are now, you know, some of these bigger distributors that we want to work with, the Budweiser's of the world throughout the country who maybe aren't quite ready to jump in cannabinoids. This gives them a version of our brand because it's done so well that they can dip into the brand gets the recognition of what we want for the overall brand wellness first using adaptogens using cannabinoids and then as they grow into they can bring on cannabinoid versions they've already got a brand in the market mm -hmm. so no it's it's exciting to bring out the blackout edition let's dive into mm -hmm. the flavors because i think that's one of those things that we don't talk about enough but they're very they're seltzer based right yep. is what all these beverages are and there's a little bit of like a hint of a fruit flavor to it and they all taste like really good. It's not, it's not sweet or anything along those lines. It just tastes like a flavored bubble water, right? Yeah. And so talk about the flavors, why you pick the flavors, uh, how they're derived, that kind of thing. Yeah, let me, I'll tell you a little bit about that, but I'll also tell you kind of what separates us from the other stuff that's in the market. And it has to do with that. Um, using real fruit was important for us. Most drinks you see in the marketplace are using some level of artificial flavoring because mm -hmm. it's a simpler, process to make and i'm not taking anything away from people who go down that route so it's tougher to make these drinks is the bottom line you were very limited um with co-packers who are really willing to use real purees so it takes a little more diligence on our end on the back end but it also you know really separates our product because you can tell we're using real fruit um we use spring water um, so, so the flavors if you can't see them yep. grapefruit blackberry lime Another grapefruit, blueberry, and blood orange. Which one's the best seller? And we don't have pineapple up here, which I'm- Oh, pineapple crushes. We yeah, have pineapple, we have pineapple and mango. And those two are great. They're two more Delta nines, but pineapple right now is kind of, you know, I'm, we just found out Monday that we won a big award. I can't say who it's with, but uh, it, it won a gold medal in the country. And we will be able to announce a little more of that here in a few weeks, but a pineapple's kind of shining. I'm um, outside of Charleston. I think in Charleston, they all equally sell. When we look at our charts, I think different people love the blueberry for a certain reason. Some people are in love with the blood orange. We know Gunner is a grapefruit fanatic. 
Um, so it's nice to see the whole Rolodeck does, does equally well, but pineapple in other markets is really stand out. And I think it's because it's such a unique flavor. Mm -hmm. And people that love a real pineapple, mm -hmm. it's got that real pineapple juice in it. So, but the other ingredients in it, like we never went for a marketing play. We weren't gonna look for, at stevia. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Again, this is just the way we chose to make our brand. We use two grams of organic cane sugar. Um, we use water, we, we use the hemp extract, and that's what's in our drinks. There's not a lot in them. Simple sometimes is the best way to go. I agree. I think sometimes we overthink formulation, and people want minimal ingredients. You know, we just got back from Expo West, and it was really enlightening to see the studies of Gen Z. And everything we make today needs to be focused around Gen Z. Uh, next year, Gen Z will take up 25% of our work population in mm. America. And that's amazing to see that that's what's going on. That's just how much is coming to this world. If we're not focused on our products and what they're looking for is they look for a product that has a story behind it. They really want to understand founders. They want to understand that there's a true mission behind a brand. And then they want to hold them accountable and they're going to turn the cans around or the ingredient box around and they're going to look at those ingredients and see that they're being true to what they're putting in there. So ingredients for us is always going to be first and foremost. The cannabinoids, the adaptogens are going to be a secondary component. We're always going to be focusing on wellness from that standpoint first. I love it. I love it. And I think, you know, as, a, as somebody who's gone down the rabbit hole of a lot of health stuff over the past five years, it's like a simple way to judge a product if it's healthy or not is how many, how many ingredients does it have, right? The fewer number of ingredients, the healthier it's going to be for you. Yeah. And, and as long as, and that's one. And two, can you pronounce the ingredients, right? If you can pronounce right. the ingredients and it's only a handful of ingredients, it's usually a healthier product than all the things you can't pronounce and a laundry list of ingredients that they, that they input in there. So Matt, part one of this, this is going to be a two part um, uh, podcast. Part one is all about the product. Part two, I'm excited to dive into the business. I want to dive into you know, your entrepreneurial journey. I want to dive into bringing this to the market, bringing this product to the market and the regulatory stuff that you've had to battle and the, the up, you know, I mean, I mean, uphill battle and, and swimming upstream kind of a thing that you've had to deal with. I want to talk about big beverage companies and I want to talk about what that, what's kind of next in the business and what that end up, ends up looking like over the next five to 10 years, what the competition looks like. I'm going to dive into all that stuff. So we're going to do that next week on Spilling the Beans. All right, and so that wraps up part one of the sit down with Matt Skinner. Hopefully you guys got some great takeaways and it opened your eyes a little bit and created some awareness around hemp drive products. I think it's um, one of those things that, that you know, there's a certain imprint in our mind growing up about what these things are and uh, not always is it accurate. And I think um, realizing that there's a lot of health benefits and a lot of positive things that can come from uh, hemp derived, and unless I'm not a, a huge proponent of it, but it's, it's, uh, I've seen it firsthand in, with people that I know, people that I love, people who are great friends of mine and, um, and the impact that it's made in their lives. And so it's, uh, it's interesting to see how industries are changing and especially for something that is this large of an industry and how each state is starting to adopt it. Uh, it'll be fascinating on how it shakes out. So stick around till next week. I'd love to share the business side. We're gonna be talking a lot more about the business side with Matt on how he built the business and how he scaled it, how he's scaled distribution and created all these strategic partnerships and built up an amazing team and surrounded himself with some great people, how he's funded his growth and all these other components of the entrepreneurial business side of things. So appreciate you being here. Please give me a like, give me a subscribe, give me your biggest takeaway in the comments and I look forward to seeing you next week.